Good morning. Today we explore Acts 12, 1 through 4. And in previous chapters, we've watched persecution, scatter believers, uh, the gospel be proclaimed in new areas, and large numbers of people come to know Christ. And in the first four verses of Acts 12, we begin to see uh, the Jerusalem church under persecution. And the main perpetrator is King Herod Agrippa the first. He is the grandson of Herod the Great, who is infamous for his attempt to seek out and slaughter the child Jesus. And he's responsible for the mass murder of male children under the age of two. If we look back in Matthew chapter two, we, we see that. And it seems that um, uh, brutal violence against God, both his son and and his people runs in this family. Uh, verse 1 says that Herod laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. You see, there will always be opposition to the gospel. Uh, when people want to hold on to power, or when, you're, when your own personal power over your own life is threatened, uh, there is opposition. Our flesh wants to control. Our flesh wants pleasure and power. Uh, but the gospel destroys our pride and our need for control and our need for the approval of man and our need for uh, a, a position or power itself. Instead, the gospel gives real freedom found in surrender to Jesus. And as such, Herod, he executed James, the brother of John, uh, with the sword. And he saw that it pleased the Jews. And, and we wanted... Uh, he, he wanted to garner favor with them. Uh, you see, Herod's past included a time of uh, imprisonment, imprisonment by uh, Emperor Tiberius, and he had ran up numerous debts in Rome. And, and due to this uh, not-so-perfect relationship with Rome, uh, gaining favor with the Jews who were under his rule acted as some kind of protection uh, from his higher-ups. So, so he wanted to please the Jews. And, and the one executed here is John, Jesus' disciple, the son of Zebedee. Uh, and his suffering is even predicted by Jesus in Mark 10, verse 39. If you remember, James and John both um, asked to sit at Jesus' right and left hand when he ruled in glory. And Jesus responds by saying they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're asking. And that one, of, one day they will drink from the same cup, cup as him. Uh, meaning that they will share in his suffering. And so uh, for James, it's fulfilled right here. So Herod, after executing James, arrests Peter and seems to have the same intention that he wants to execute him. But since it was the days of unleavened bread, meaning the seven days following the Passover meal, he wasn't executed immediately at that time. Uh, this time period was considered holy and was not to, and was not to be desecrated with an execution. So uh, Peter was taken, he was seized, he was arrested and put in prison, and some scholars believe that the prison was probably the Tower of Antonia at the corner of the temple complex, which is also housed the Roman garrison. And Peter was guarded by four squads of soldiers, and, and Herod had intended to, to bring him out to the people after the Passover activities were uh, completed. And it's clear that Peter is in danger of the same fate as James. Uh, laying there sleeping between two soldiers guarding him, chained to, chained to them with two more standing outside the door. Um, what will become of him? Uh, is this situation beyond the reach of God? Has Peter been abandoned at this point? Well, you have to hang on till Monday or just read ahead to see what happens. Uh, and believe me, you will not want to miss it. Uh, and, and you never want to miss what God is doing in his, his word. And so continue to read, continue to, to, to dig in, to dive in, to join us each and every day as we work our way through Acts. But read ahead a little bit and you'll get a little spoiler. But uh, we'll talk about it on Monday and we hope to see you then.